Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the Ordro EP7. This is a head-mounted wearable camcorder that is interesting because it actually has a gimbal for two axes stabilization, meaning that if you're walking around it should mitigate the jitters and stabilize the video better than other cheaper low-cost camcorders and action cams we've seen in the past. Now, it sells for around $200, it records up to 4K Ultra HD content, actually comes with a 64 4 gigabyte micro SD card in the box and also has built-in Wi-Fi so you can connect it to a companion app using iOS or Android and you have the ability to see what the camera is seeing. It's got a wide angle 90 degree field of view. It's using a Sony CMOS sensor that has up to 13 megapixels, IP65 for water resistance, and a 1000 milliamp hour capacity battery that will actually get you around 180 minutes or two hours of recording time but that's being a little bit optimistic. But you can also still use it while being plugged into a power bank. Uh, so you can have a cable connected and the power bank can be in your pocket, for example. So the packaging here just comes in a hard carrying case, which is protected pretty well. And on the inside, you get a ton of different accessories. Uh, we've already taken out the actual EP7 itself, but uh, you can see it here. It can actually be detached from this headband if you wanted to. But other things that you get here include the aforementioned micro SD card that supplies uh, video support up to 4K resolution for recording, and there's also a quick user guide. There is also the aforementioned remote that you can use to snap an image or begin recording video. There is also a keychain hook, and this remote control charges up using micro USB, just like the camera itself. So it's pretty convenient. Of course, USB Type-C would be even better, but overall it works well enough. Now here is also a little wristband accessory that's really for the remote control. So you can actually put the remote on your wrist, for example, and uh, more easily control it, which is a pretty thoughtful touch. You also get access to a microfiber clean cloth and this is a little tool for removing the camera from the headband so what I mean by that is if we take a closer look it's attached like this and you can also use this little tool here to basically align it and then just twist on it to unhook it which will then pop out like so and reveal that on the inside it has a standard tripod mount that you can also mount onto a tripod like this if you want to record things in one place, maybe for a time-lapse video or something like that. So here is the camera itself, and again, it really is super compact. Here's how it stacks up against a average smartphone there in terms of size, as well as against something like a full-size action camera. You can see it's almost twice as thin, and the thickness is about the same as well. Now, the body of the camera is constructed out of this polycarbonate plastic but it does feel pretty solid. On the bottom here we do have the aforementioned micro USB port along with the micro SD card slot and on the side we even get a mini HDMI port as well so you can use this to even connect directly to a TV or monitor if you want to view back content by connecting the camera, which is pretty neat. And this thing does have two microphones as well. So the mic quality is also pretty good, surprisingly for something so small. The top here houses the power key that you can hold for about two seconds to turn it on. And there is also a speaker that's basically integrated on the inside of this tripod mount that will give you some indication since when you're wearing it, you can't really access anything like a screen on the camera. So it will say things like recording or taking an image, for example. Taking a picture. You can say it there, it will take an image after a second and then it will be done. So uh, it gives you a few voice commands. And otherwise we can also see the camera lens then on the other side. It's protected in this chrome accented kind of glass that actually looks quite good because as we are tilting the camera around, you'll see it start to kind of shift just to mitigate those motions a little bit. Now again, this is not a three axis gimbal, so some of the shakiness might still not be completely canceled out, but at least having this in place is quite impressive on something so tiny and does make quite a big difference, especially in the budget range that this model is kind of going for. Um, otherwise, again, just a very simple design, pretty lightweight, but overall feels decent in terms of the build quality. And again, the notification light on the edge here is also a nice touch. It's green when it's turned on, and it will be red when it's charging, and blue when it is connected in the the Wi-Fi mode.
it will say Wi-Fi on and the blue light here will be blinking. So if you want to activate that function, you do have to often provide a bit more of power to it. Pretty much anything that it's pointing at or looking in front of, it will capture without any problems. And uh, you don't have to be super precise in terms of aligning the shot. Just wear it on your head. As you turn your head, everything that you're seeing from your line of sight, this camera will basically see. By the way, you can still slightly adjust the angle of the camera just by twisting it upwards or downwards like so. Uh, so you can kind of angle it higher or lower just by twisting on this hinge part, which does work pretty well. Overall, it's lightweight and comfortable enough for what it is. Now, this is basically what it will look like if you're wearing it and it'll be just on the side of your head so it's not completely invisible that's not really the purpose of this it's not a spy cam per se some examples of what it looks like when you're wearing it not too awkward i would say to just kind of wear and walk around with when it comes to vlogging and doing everyday stuff and just capturing while your hands are free and then the app here is called od cam after you're connected to the wi-fi you can just tap on verify device and you should see it kind of pop open here as a preview of what the camera is seeing. Familiar if you've used any other let's say dashboard cam security camera in the past and it works in exactly the same way in terms of the responsiveness uh, there's going to be a split second delay due to the kind of wi-fi latency but overall it works well enough and we can see here that in terms of the field of view it's indeed quite wide we can tilt the screen to have a full screen effect here and I can kind of wobble a little bit just by walking around or something like that and the overall image as you can see is still relatively stable. Now there is a slow-mo 120 frames per second mode although that is degraded to 720p so it is one thing to keep in mind but you can play around with those settings. A battery gauge will also be found on the very top section there and I will say that if you have again Wi-Fi turned on it goes through the battery a lot faster which is why connecting it to cable will be preferred. Let's play back some demo clips of footage recorded with this camera earlier in the day. So the takeaway is quality of the footage is actually pretty good for something that is in this price bracket and from a company that is maybe not as well known as other mainstream brands. It is doing a pretty good job uh, if you're walking around and it definitely will get you some very usable footage. Details and quality again in well lit spaces are also very good. Of course when the light starts to go down the quality will also start to degrade but that's true of most cameras especially ones which have such a small tiny sensor and body to begin with. So for what it is I already think it performs above average for a head mounted unit. Of course, it's not perfect for one, I think having some form of electrical image stabilization or some type of software stabilization afterwards could further improve things, but that's the software part that Orgrio hasn't really implemented since they have really relied on that hardware gimbal entirely to do the job. So having a bit of EIS could make it do even better, I think. Uh, for example, that's really what the GoPro Hero relies on since there is no built-in gimbal on those, but the software magic really also makes a huge difference on the GoPro. Pro action cams. So if they can incorporate both, uh, this could even be better maybe in a future software update or later generation product. But you can still do some of that magic yourself using other creative video editing tools. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. It's been the super small Ordrio EP7.